Welcome back to LimQ Plus, everyone. On this channel, I'm 100%ing Breath of the Wild by a bit every day until the sequel Tears of the Kingdom comes out, which is today in 167 days. Um, I will talk about different topics every day while playing, and I hope you enjoy. My goal today is to go to Satori Mountain and stack up on some food and additionally explore some more Korok seeds. We want to reach, I think, 9% of this today. 9% completion. Or maybe it might even be 10%. I need to double check once this um, BLSS is done. And today I want to talk about my biggest... This is going to sound a little bit dramatic. My biggest fear about Tears of the Kingdom. Something I've been thinking about a lot lately. Tears of the Kingdom is getting closer and closer. We're getting soon to the point where it's only five months away. And that also means we're getting closer and closer to the next big official trailer. I say this a lot in these videos. My prediction is that the next big official trailer is gonna drop in um, the first Nintendo Direct of 2023, which traditionally is in January or February. Now, my biggest fear for Tears of the Kingdom is that the long hair version, which again, it makes the most sense to call it the long hair version, hair version. When I talk about long hair version, I talk about the ancient hero looking Link with long open hair. Um, I don't know if I have a good armor piece here to showcase this, but yes, it's true. In this game, Link has long hair too. It's just made, it's just all like up in a, in a man bun. Um, I don't think this really shows it, but there's some armor pieces like the, the Vine Beast helmets where you can see that his hair is actually quite long. It's just all in that um, little ponytail at the back. But still, you know what I'm talking about? Green Tunic Link, who looks really uh, like a, like the ancient hero. That Link is what I'm talking about. Now, my fear comes from this. I think that version of Link looks extremely cool. Um, we have already seen him wield some sort of new X weapon. Everything about him looks like ancient past type Link. Um, but... We have never seen, as far as I know, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think I've seen these trailers long enough. We have never seen that version of Link on the Hyrule overworld. Now, technically, there is this one shot in a teaser where Link starts at the bottom and he, like, goes up to one of those Sky Island... What is that sound? Oh, I think it's a bomb arrow. Oh, a fire arrow. Never mind. Um... Also, these leaves are just flying. Anyway, we've seen footage where Link just goes from the bottom up to a, a sky island, and it's the long hair version, the tunic version. But we've never seen that tunic version of Link walk around on the overworld of Hyrule, where we have seen this Link, the Link that we know, um, roam around in Hyrule. So my prediction, first of all, for the lore of Tears of the Kingdom is, in my opinion, um, but I think the game is going to start um, it, it, the basement of Hyrule Castle, investigating together with short hair Zelda. Maybe we get a little bit of a flashback why Zelda's hair is short and maybe a little bit of backstory. But we're going to be investigating... Actually, I don't think it's going to be investigating under Hyrule Castle, actually. Um, even though the castle starts eventually flying up, um, I feel like when we... When Link and Zelda investigate in that cave from the very first teaser, it's actually going to be in Farron. Um, one of those Farron ruins. Um, because we see Zonai technology and Zonai drawings on the wall. We're going to be exploring there. For some reason, reason, we trigger something there that makes the castle fly up and awaken. Zelda goes missing, falls down some cliff. And then shit goes down, the castle starts flying, the, the flying island starts showing up again. We make some connection with the past of Hyrule. Um, this is also a basic, I'm not a lore theory crafter, but this is my, this is the rough idea, right? And then we wake up uh, on one of the Sky Islands as this version of Link. That's my prediction. We've already seen shots that seem like that. The most recent trailer when these doors open almost looks like some sort of opening shot to the game. We've seen when the game was delayed, we've seen Link talk to this weird light with this broken master sword. I think that is pretty much the real beginning of the game, these shots. That's where they play. Uh, that's uh, that's where, where they are from. And then it's about discovering this new Hyrule, this, this altered Hyrule as Link, and seek out the Tears of the Kingdom. And I, what I'm afraid about is that these Tears of the Kingdom um, sort of act as memories, right? Every tear tells a story, every tear has a memory. And whenever we actually get these tears, maybe in these brief sections we get to play the ancient hero Link. And it's gonna be kind of like a like an instant section of gameplay. Maybe a little bit of, oh, uh, here we explore this island now, we explore this room now. And that's exactly what I'm afraid about. I really hope that in Tears of the Kingdom there is too 
high roots. There's the uh, high rule of the f from this game future and the high rule of the past, where we can completely explore again with the ancient hero Link. And it's not just like this small playable character that you can play in memories. So my biggest fear is essentially. Well, my biggest fear, again, this is like a dramatic title, but my biggest fear is that the game sucks. That would be really sad. Um, or even that they don't patch out all of the glitches and the speedrun is going to feel exactly the same and I have no content. But um, one of the biggest fears, uh, lore-wise, would be that this cool design of Link, this ancient hero Link, only acts as some sort of playable um, character for memories. So instead of memories in this game, we get different memories. We get memories um, that we can play in, um, but they are still very instant, very brief, uh, very brief. And that is what I don't want. I want this different link to be a fully playable character um, and I want to explore the world with him. Um, and this would go hand in hand with something really cool, which it would be awesome to explore this Hyrule, the Hyrule that we are going through in this game. But, um, oh, I also messed this up. Sorry, I need to do this one bump better. Uh, the Hyrule that we explore in this game, but an, a less broken version, an ancient version that has all of the architecture that in this game is broken restored and the ruins restored and maybe different civilizations different towns again that's only a big wish um i know that sounds like a lot of work but it would be really cool because the game has been in development for five years I, there's no way that they just make a slightly altered version of the map we already have i hope um so yeah that's really what i hope um, it's my favorite design of Link ever. Also, short hair Zelda is my favorite design of Zelda ever. Not sure if we're gonna find... M maybe... Okay, now, now this is starting to be like a theory craft video, but it would be even cooler that in that scene where Zelda falls back in time, right? Oh, like, no, that's what I'm already giving away. Where Zelda like falls down into this like a pit or whatever. If that was actually her falling back in time and then Link would be by himself here, maybe with like... Paya and friends in this world um, investigating the changes in Hyrule and in the past the ancient hero would actually uh, discover the world together with uh, Princess Zelda. That would be um, quite cool, maybe lead some, some, to some spicy moments but you know one can only dream. We know um, that when it comes to that sort of stuff Nintendo is usually a little bit careful not giving people too much. But again, I think about this all the time. The, the, the long hair ancient hero form is my favorite form. Uh, my favorite... The f my favorite design of Link ever. And I would be really upset if the only thing that design is good for is to tell some short uh, back flashes. And you can maybe use them in like small fractions of gameplay instead of being able to use that form of Link all the time. If we choose to do so. But man, every time I talk about this game, I can't wait to learn more about it and i think realistically even though the game is 167 days away um the direct should not be more than 60 days away i think from us maybe it's between 60 and 80 i think is a fair is a fair guess we'll get our big story trailer i am sure about about it and i can't wait um on my stream, I've also been making big advancements in the 100% playthrough. I um, have almost played through the complete 100% route of this game, so I will be starting 100% speedruns with all of the new strategies soon on my Twitch. Probably on Monday should be the first full run with timer and everything ready. I'm actually really excited. It uh, has definitely refreshed the game for me quite a bit. You do a lot, in, in 100% you actually do a lot of things differently than you do in other speedruns. For example, the BLSS, the bow lift smuggle slide trick, is not very apparent, it's not very common in the 100% um, speedrun because you usually travel way too much. Um, and what I mean by that is, actually I'm just gonna go down here to this rock circle. What I mean by that is, um, in other categories, you use the BLSS quite a lot because you have to travel long distances, for example, from Zora's Domain all the way to, let's say, Gerudo Desert. Whereas, uh, where in 100%, um, because you have to get all of the Koroks, 
Wind bombs are usually much better, and it's very fun to do these quick, precise wind bombs from one location to another. Let me demonstrate here um, what I mean. Like, we would get this Korok, right? Um, and then there's actually already a Korok up there. So it would never be worth it to set up one of those slides. Instead, we would just wind bomb over there and then get the Korok right away. And then it, ke it keeps on going. Like, this area in particular has a lot of Korok seeds that are really close to each other. There's one here, and then again, it's not even worth wind bombing here because there's like two Korok seeds. There's immediately one right here, right? Oh, never mind, that was wrong. Gotta count some flowers here. I don't know if I've gotten a Korok like this in this playthrough yet. One, two, three. Yes, I can count. Four. And five. And then there's another Korok right away in the pond next to me. So it, it makes the run quite more... It makes it run a little bit more... It makes it feel a little bit more action-packed. There's constantly something small going on, even if it's just getting a Korok. Constantly something you can optimize. And it's new gameplay for me, so I'm excited to be doing it soon. But yeah, I just wanted to change, uh, share that little brief uh, thought about Tears of the Kingdom that I've been thinking about. Just because I really, man... I, I know I said this like three times now, but... It would be so sad. That design of Link is so cool. Obviously, we've seen... I mean, at least I have seen countless of artwork, really good artwork. Of that version of Link. So, I hope it's a true playable character. But that being said, that being said, we are actually already... We've been collecting a lot of Korok seeds. Yep, I'm already at 9.76%. Three more Korok seeds should do the job, and I know exactly where to get them. Gonna go over here to this little basketball shot and then get two Korok seeds that you can get by destroying a pile of leaves. And then we should be exactly at 10%. First 10% of this place were completed. We still have 167 days, so I might have to slow down. Maybe do something for fun every once in a while, do a mini game. But then again, as we get uh, later into this challenge, it's gonna be harder and harder to actually find things that we are still missing. Also, it actually helps me that I'm doing the actual 100% speedrun now. Um, while I'm doing this playthrough. As a refresher to where the Koroks even are in the first place. But yeah, there should be one more pile of leaves at this uh, little formation of rocks here, leading us to exactly 10%. And... Uh, Marking the end of today's recording. Thank you guys as always for watching, listening, and hanging out and getting hype with me for the next Big Zelda game. Another Korok here. I actually kind of like the markings on that guy's mask. Cute. But that leaves it at exactly 10 of one, uh, out of 100%. Nice milestone reached. Thank you guys for watching. Tomorrow, 166 days until Tears of the Kingdom. I'll see you there. Enjoy your weekend. And I'll see you tomorrow.